Welcome to Psychopath in Your Life. This is episode number 35, and I'm your host, Diane Emerson. I'm the author of the book, Psychopaths in Our Lives, My Interviews, which is available on Amazon and iBooks. Amazon is the only location you can get the paperback copy. So today I'd like to continue our chat, which begins with episode 33, and I'm calling it Love and Psychopaths. And I really thank you a lot for your emails because I get a lot of emails and what I'm trying to do is focus in on the ones that have the widest group of questions and people to start to try to answer some of these questions now. The emails give me lots of details of lots of lying, affairs, and a horrible life in general. And then they usually follow up by asking me the question, do you think this person is a psychopath? Well, I'm really not in a position to either confirm or deny your suspicions. I would have to say there must be a reason in your own mind how you got to the is this person a psychopath question. Was it a small voice that is pointing you in this direction? I have to assume you've ruled out garden variety jerks. We're talking about a whole different characteristic here. I remember reading years ago, this private detective was talking about when they were called upon to um, tail or snoop up on a spouse that um, the, the spouse that hired the detective thought was having an affair. And they said that usually 99.9% .9 of the time, they were just hired to confirm the suspicions of the partner. See, inside, we all know a lot, a lot of these answers, but are we listening? And it's a great thing to question what is going on in your life and the people involved. I can say it will be difficult once you start asking those questions. Please try to remind yourself during this process that you aren't to blame for the situation. Understanding the how and why a relationship with a psychopath is formed can also help you in the future to avoid the next one in your path. So there's also the possibility of something commingled going on. And what I mean by that is a person can have more than one diagnosis. For example, somebody could be um, psychotic and also maybe have bipolar disorder. I'm just putting those out there. So that's what we mean by commingled diagnosis. For example, a person can be a psychopath and also be an alcoholic. But not al all alcoholics are psychopaths. They can just be nasty people. I get a lot of this mingled of the questions that, hey, I, th I think he's also an alcoholic. Yes, that's possibly true. And you also have to weed out, is all this behavior happening when the person is drinking or is it happening at other times? So you have to kind of start to um, thin out the data a little bit to try to take a look at what's beneath all that. So I'm not all anyway in a position to tell you if this person you're writing about is a psychopath or not. What I'm here to do is chat about the hows and whys of the situation so you can make a decision for yourself. We need to observe things so we don't fall into putting people into categories of being psychopaths when they really aren't. It's a very specific issue, and it has to do with they're basically lacking a conscience. But all of the things we've been talking about in this podcast would give you clues of the conscious and whether it's operating or play acting. So for now, there's several things we know about psychopaths. We know they can't love. They can be great actors. What are some of the other um, clues showing you you're indeed in a relationship with a psychopath? Can you think of any other clues? One thing all psychopaths do is they lure in their victims or explain their actions by appearing to be the victim in any situation. The victim thing really gets flipped around. So, and we can all agree there's pretty much a few phases that are well planned out to lure you in. It is really a three or so step process. Getting you to fall in love, gaslighting when the cracks start to show, and all this fades into the getting you to leave phase. Psychopaths will never be able to return your love, but they know every move to convince you that they are the one. And also, here it gets sticky. Since most, if not all, victims suffer from severe PTSD, why you stay is difficult to predict. It is hard to comprehend the pain when you get to the point something is telling you the person you love is a psychopath. I can only imagine the first reaction is to reject that voice that told you it was true. So let me give you a quote from one of the psychopaths 
I wanted to know what they felt about the um, your pain stage, okay? How do they feel when you're reacting in pain? And here's what the quote is. I would take great pleasure in watching a couple of people crumble into ruin. And if I was given the opportunity, I'm not sure I'd be able to resist getting a few kicks in to help them on their way down. But then nobody is perfect. So I imagine I'm by no means unusual in this regard. Well, yes, this is unusual. And it goes to point to you that psychopaths actually take pleasure in your pain. And they particularly take pleasure if they feel that you have done anything to cross their um, control lines. So what I'd like to do is next time I'd like to talk about the getting you to leave phase of the relationship with a psychopath. It's one of several that I'll be covering in future podcasts, but that was the one that I found really fascinating is how that they will actually plot to get you to leave them so they don't have to break up with you. But that doesn't mean they're not going to come back again. So anyway, so until next week, and we'll chat about that more. And I hope if you like this podcast, you will subscribe. And thanks in advance for any help you can offer by sharing the links on um, social media. And you can find this podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Facebook, YouTube, and the website. If you go to the website, psychopathinyourlife.com, it's the same name as the podcast, there's also an audio box there and you can listen directly. And there's also a contact box where you can send me an email message without having to use your email message and do it confidentially. My direct email box is Diane, D-I-A-N-N-E, at Diane Emerson, D-I-A-N-N-E-E-M-E-R-S-O-N. So anyway, so when we're ready to ask the question, the answer will appear. Goodbye for now. Talk to you next week. Bye.